हेलो एवरी वन वेलकम टू माई चैनल एंड उपमा बायोलॉजी क्लासेज एंड दिस इज द टेंथ वीडियो इन द सीरीज ऑफ ह्यूमन फिजियोलॉजी इन टूडेज वीडियो वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट द ह्यूमन एंडोक्राइन सिस्टम एंड दिस वीडियो इज द पार्ट एट्थ ऑफ द ह्यूमन फिजियोलॉजी सो लेट स्टार्ट द टॉपिक एट फर्स्ट वी विल डिस्कस द मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टेंट थिंग दैट वॉट इज द एंडोक्राइन सिस्टम it is made up of glands that produce and secrete hormones that is the chemical substances which is produced in the body that regulates the activity of cells and organs these hormones regulate the body growth metabolism and the sexual develop development and its function now like the nervous system it is also meant for the internal communication and the regulation of the animal body and many important functions of the endocrine system is under control of nervous system so these two that is the endocrine system and nervous system also known as neuroendocrine system now hormones hormones are the chemical messengers that regulate the biological process in the organism The first hormone that is secretin was discovered by William M Bliss and Ernst H Starling in 1903. The term hormone was coined by Starling in 1905. Hormones means to stimulate or excite but it also act as inhibitor. Now the question is how is it transport in the body? endocrine cells release hormones into the extracellular fluid from here hormones diffuses into the blood stream the latter carries them from the site of production to the site of action where they act on specific organs called the target organs then here in blood all the hormones are present but the target organ pick up the specific hormones how so because of this every target organs have specific receptors for the specific hormones now the classification of hormones on the basis of chemical nature which is of four types first one is amino acid derivatives in this epinephrine and norepinephrine from adrenal medulla and thyroxine from thyroid gland releases these are derived from amino acid tyrosine second is peptides which is of two types short peptides and long peptides in the short peptides like oxytocin and vasopressin from the posterior lobe of pituitary and melanocyte stimulating hormones from the anterior intermediate lobe of pituitary secreted and in the long peptides like insulin and glucagon from the pancreas adrenocorticotropic hormones from the anterior lobe of pituitary calcitonin from thyroid and parathormone from the parathyroid gland releases third is proteins and the examples are gonadotropic somatotropic and thyrotropic hormones these hormones are released from the anterior lobe of pituitary and these are proteins the last is steroids and these hormones are releases from the adrenal cortex testes ovaries and placenta they are synthesized from cholesterol now human endocrine system in which the human endocrine glands a hormone from one gland may stimulate or inhibit another endocrine glands so hormones of hypothalamus regulates pituitary glands and the hormones of pituitary influence many other endocrine glands so here the pituitary gland is called the primary target of the hypothalamic hormones the endocrine glands influenced by the pituitary glands are secondary targets of the hypothalamic hormones and the hormones of the secondary target glands affect the final target organs now the types of endocrine glands which is of two types first one is purely endocrine glands and the examples are hypothalamus thyroid parathyroid thymus adrenal pituitary and pineal these are devoted entirely for the secretion of hormones second is partly endocrine glands and the examples are kidneys pancreas gonads mucous membrane of alimentary canal and placenta this shows dual function that is partly endocrine and partly exocrine 
Now, in the following account, we will discuss structure, secretion, function, and disorders of various endocrine glands. Here in the picture, you can see all the endocrine glands and their location in the body, like pineal, pituitary, and hypothalamus in the brain. Thyroids is in the neck region. Thymus is at the chest region. Pancreas in the abdomen below the stomach adrenal is on the kidneys and testes and ovaries in case of male and female respectively are responsible for various hormone secretion now the first endocrine gland that is the hypothalamus in this picture you can see the hypothalamus in fundibulum and pituitary gland and their organization in the brain for the releasing hormones it develops from the ectoderm of the embryo. It is the base of diencephalon, a part of the forebrain. According to the structure, it is connected with the anterior lobe of pituitary gland by the hypophyseal portal blood vessels and with the posterior lobe of the pituitary gland by exons of its neurons. And the hormones in the hypothalamus are the releaser hormones that is RH. So the neurosecretory cells of the hypothalamus when stimulated release hormones which are neurohormones via exons into the capillaries. Certain hormones of hypothalamus are inhibitory in function so they are known as inhibitory hormones. Here all the hypothalamic hormones their response to pituitary and the target organs so the first one is thyrotropic releasing hormone which gives response to the tsh secretion it means thyrotropin stimulating hormones secretion which activates thyroid gland to release hormones second is adrenocorticotropin releasing hormones which give response to the adrenocorticotropic hormone secretion in the pituitary which activates adrenal cortex third is follicle stimulating hormone releasing hormone which give response to the follicle stimulating hormone secretion in the pituitary which activates ovary and testes then luteinizing hormone releasing hormone or luteotropic hormone releasing hormone which activates luteotropic hormone secretion uh, in the pituitary which activates target organ that is the ovaries and testes then growth hormone releasing hormone which give response to the growth hormone or somatotropic hormone secretion in the pituitary which activates most of the tissues then the growth hormone inhibitory hormone and it give response to the growth hormone secretion inhibited which gives response to the target organ that is most of the tissues after that the prolactin releasing hormone which give response to the prolactin hormone or luteotropic releasing hormone secretion which activates the mammary glands and it also act as an inhibitor then melanocyte stimulating hormone releasing hormone which give response to the melanocyte stimulating hormone secretion in the pituitary which act activates skin pigment cells to release hormones and it also act as inhibitor now the second is pituitary or hypophysis it originates from the ectoderm of the embryo it attached to the hypothalamus of the brain by a stalk or infundibulum in front of the pons in the picture you can see the attachment of pituitary to the hypothalamus and the two parts of the pituitary that is anterior and posterior according to the structure it consists of three lobes first one is the pars anterior or adenohypophysis pars intermedia and the pars nervosa or neurohypophysis the anterior and posterior lobes are connected with the hypothalamus by hypothalamo-hypophyseal portal system and by exons of hypothalamic neurons respectively. The anterior and intermediate lobe develops as an outgrowth from the root of stomodium, while the posterior lobe arises as the downgrowth from the floor of the diencephalon. Now, the hormones of pituitary. So, according to the parts, each and every part releases different hormones. First is by anterior lobe of pituitary. 
this is the two portions of the pituitary and the hormones in the picture you can see first is follicle stimulating hormone in male it stimulates sperm formation and in female it stimulates growth of the follicles in the ovaries in case of older person it maintains sexual activity then luteinizing hormone in male it induces the interstitial cells of the testis to produce male sex hormones while in female it causes ovulation and secretion of female sex hormone testosterone which uh, make the male genital system to become full grown and functional and the estrogen from the maturing ovarian follicle and progesterone by the corpus luteum formed in the empty ovarian follicle thyroid stimulating hormone which stimulates growth of thyroid and production of thyroid hormones then adrenocorticotropic hormones which stimulates the adrenal cortex to grow and secrete glucocorticoids and mineralocorticoids these glucocorticoids and mineralocorticoids are hormones which released by the adrenal cortex which is a part of adrenal gland then growth hormone which stimulates the growth and development of all tissues by accelerating protein synthesis and cell division and by retaining calcium in the body it also enables the cells to take up more amino acids and mobilize fat and makes the liver to release glucose for energy supply now disorders by growth hormone first is dwarfism in the picture you can see growth of long bones and of the body stop prematurely making the patient dwarf it is caused in early stage deficiency second is gigantism it is caused by the excess of growth hormone from the childhood in the picture you can see in this the people have abnormal height and very long bones then acromegaly it is caused by excess of growth hormones after adolescence in the picture you can see in this the bones of lower jaws and limbs become abnormally large but the body doesn't attain giant stature now the prolactin hormone which stimulates the growth of milk glands during pregnancy and the secretion of the milk after delivery the inhibition is removed in nursing women by nerve impulse produced when the infant sucks on the nipple second by the anterior intermediate lobe of pituitary it secretes a hormone that is melanocyte stimulating hormone which stimulates the synthesis of black pigment melanin in the skin now the third part of the pituitary hormones that is the posterior lobe so first is oxytocin it is released into the blood when the hypothalamic neurons are stimulated by widening of the uterus at the time of delivery or by sucking of the breast by the infants so it is known as birth hormone or milk ejecting hormone second is vasopressin it decreases the loss of water in the urine by increasing the reabsorption of water in the dct collecting tubules and collecting ducts it also stimulates the contraction of smooth muscles of the arterioles thereby enhancing the arterial blood pressure so it is known as vasopressin in this picture you can see the two parts of the pituitary glands which connected by the blood vessels and nerves to the hypothalamus disorders by the vasopressin first is deficiency of adh causes diabetes insipidus in this because adh deficiency reduces the reabsorption of water and increase urine output causing excessive thirst and no glucose is lost in the urine of this diabetes insipidus person pituitary is known as master endocrine gland because number of hormones produced by it and controlled by exercise over other endocrine glands now the third part that is the pineal gland or epiphysis in this picture you can see the structure of the brain and the attachment of pineal gland to the brain it arises from the ectoderm of the embryo this is the pineal gland 
It lies under the corpus callosum between the two cerebral hemispheres of the brain at the tip of a short pineal stalk arising from the roof of the diencephalon. It is very small reddish grey vascular conical solid body. The hormones of pineal is melatonin. It causes concentration of pigment granules in the melanocytes making the skin color lighter in certain animals and it also regulates the working of gonads. Now the fourth that is the thyroid gland. It originates from the endoderm of the embryo. It surrounds the front of the larynx and the upper part of the trachea in the neck. In this picture, the orange-red color structure is thyroid. According to the structure, this is the thyroid gland on which parathyroid gland present. It is bilobed highly vascular organs. The two lobes are connected by isthmus. It is composed of rounded follicles held together by stroma and enclosed by capsule. In the picture, you can see the rounded structures are follicles. Now, the hormones of thyroid gland. Thyroid gland secretes three hormones. First is thyroxine or tetraidothyronine, which is known as T4. Second is triadothyronine, which is known as T3, and the calcitonin. In this picture, you can see the thyroid gland and the parathyroid glands, which present on the thyroid glands, and four in number, two on each side. Role of hormones. In this picture, the first hypothalamus activates pituitary to release thyroid stimulating hormone. Then it activates thyroids. You know about this because we discussed this in the hypothalamus portion. In case of the role of hormones, the thyroid gland controls the general metabolism by regulating the rate of oxidation and production of energy. It maintains the BMR of the body. It promotes growth of the body tissues and development of mental faculties. It stimulates tissue differentiation. So it affects metamorphosis of a tadpole into an adult frog. And it also controls the working of the kidney. Because if deficiency results in decrease in the urine output and the vice versa. Now, the disorders of the thyroid hormones. First is Graves' disease. In the picture, you can see it is caused by hypersecretion of thyroid hormones due to enlargement of thyroid. This is because the excess of thyroid hormones increase metabolic rate and accelerates oxidation because of increased oxidation leads to quick heartbeat, rise in blood pressure, high blood body temperature. Nervousness, irritability, tremor and bulging eyeballs. This can be rectified by removal of a part of the gland. Second is cretinism. In this picture you can see it is caused by hyposecretion of the thyroid hormones in infants. In this leads to so slow heartbeat, lower blood pressure, decreased in body temperature, stunted growth, mental retardation, awkward body with pot valley protruding tongue and pigeon chest and retarded sexual development. This can be treated by hormonotherapy. After that, myxedema, it is caused by deficiency of thyroid hormones in the adults. It is common in women than in men. In this, the patient lacks alertness, intelligence and initiatives and also suffer from slow heartbeat, lower blood pressure, decreased body temperature and retarded sexual development. Fourth is goiter which is caused by deficiency of iodine in the diet. In the picture you can see the enlarged inflamed hypofunctioning thyroid that is goiter. It causes enlargement of the thyroid gland and the last is calcitonin. It regulates the concentration of the calcium and phosphorus in the blood. It is secreted by C cells. Now the fifth that is parathyroid gland. In the structure you can see 
the left and right parathyroid gland which is in pair it is originated from the endoderm of the embryo it is situated on the posterior surface of the thyroid lobes and according to the structure these are four in number two in each side and there are two types of cells small chief cells and large oxyphil cells which are enclosed by capsule in the magnified view that is pink in color you can see the oxyphil cells and the chief cells now the hormones of parathyroid it secretes a single hormone called parathormone or collips hormone parathormone and calcitonin act antagonistically to regulate the calcium phosphorus balance in the blood calcium is vital for the blood clotting for the muscle tone and for the normal muscle activity according to disorders first is hyperparathyroidism hyposecretion of parathormone lowers concentration of calcium ions in the blood and tissues due to excretion of calcium in urine this increases the excitability of nerves and muscles causing cramps and convulsions in this sustained contractions of the muscle of larynx face hands and feet are produced which is known as parathyroid tetany and the second is hyperparathyroidism hypersecretion of parathormone draws more calcium from the bones resulting in their softening bending and fracture this is called osteoporosis and it is common in women who have reached menopause now the feedback control of the parathyroid parathyroid are under the feedback control of blood calcium label a fall in blood calcium level stimulate them to secrete parathormone which restores the blood calcium level a rise in blood calcium level inhibits secretion of parathormone and the concentration of calcium and phosphorus in the blood is effectively maintained by parathormone and calcitonin calcitonin is hormone from the thyroid gland and parathormone from the parathyroid gland both act as antagonistic function now the sex that is the thymus it arises from the endoderm of the embryo in the picture you can see the structure of thymus it is situated in the upper chest near the front side of the heart according to the structure it is soft pinkish bilobed mass of lymphoid tissues at birth it is prominent gland but it gradually atrophies in the adult the thymus is composed of tiny lobules held together by connective tissues according to hormones it secretes a peptide hormone that is thymosin these accelerate cell division thus influencing the rate of growth during early life it provides humoral immunity and cell mediated immunity now adrenal glands or suprarenals in the picture you can see which is present on the kidney these are the adrenal glands it has dual origin mesodermal and ectodermal origin these are pair glands placed on the top of the kidney in the picture you can see according to the structure it has two distinct regions adrenal cortex and adrenal medulla which are conical yellowish bodies adrenal cortex has three regions outer middle and inner adrenal cortex hormones it had many hormones first one is mineralocorticoids the major mineralocorticoid is aldosterone which is salt retaining hormone it tends to increase the reabsorption of sodium from urine saliva bile sweat to reduce its loss from the body it also increases the elimination of potassium in these fluids in exchange for the reabsorbed sodium it increases the reabsorption of water from the urine by raising the osmotic pressure of the blood through reabsorption of sodium into it so it maintains the water and electrolyte balance and blood volume in the body second is glucocorticoids the most important glucocorticoids is cortisol they regulate the metabolism of the carbohydrate fats and proteins they increase the blood glucose level by converting proteins and fats into carbohydrates which are in turn converted to glucose they have anti inflammatory and anti allergic effects 
Now the sex corticoids. They secrete a small amount of male testosterone and the female estrogen and progesterone hormones. Testosterone stimulates secondary sexual characters in male while estrogen stimulates secondary sexual characters in female. So here in this picture you can see the structure of adrenal gland which has three parts. First is the zona glomerulosa, then the zona fasciculata and then the zona reticularis. And in the lower section shows the hormones which is released by the different parts. Now disorders. First is the Cushing syndrome which is caused by excess of cortisol. It is characterized by high blood sugar level, excretion of sugar in urine, obesity, wasting of limb muscles, high sodium and concentration in plasma, low potassium and concentration in plasma and rise in blood volume and blood pressure. Second is aldosteronism which is caused by excess of aldosterone. Its symptoms are high sodium ion concentration in plasma and low potassium ion concentration in plasma because of this rise in blood volume and blood pressure. Then the adrenal virilism it is caused by excess of sex corticoids in female. She develops male secondary sexual characters such as beard, moustaches and hoarse voice. And the last is addition's disease which is caused by deficiency of mineralocorticoids which is characterized by iron imbalance which lowers water retention. Second is adrenal medulla hormones. It secretes two hormones epinephrine or adrenaline and norepinephrine noradrenaline. Role of epinephrine and norepinephrine. They whip of metabolism for preparing the animal to face a special condition created by physical stress. It stimulates the breakdown of liver and muscle glycosin to provide glucose for respiration. Then it also acts as fight and flight. How? It prepares the body to face stress or danger. So it is known as glands of emergency. In this case, a warm red face, cold sweating hands and faster heart beats are the symptoms often noticeable before a stage performance or an examination. The adrenal medulla and the sympathetic nervous system function as an integrated system called sympathetico-adrenal system because adrenal medulla is stimulated to secrete its hormones by nerve impulse reaching through the sympathetic nerve fibers and adrenaline reinforces the action of sympathetic nerves. Now the eighth that is the pancreas. This is the structure of pancreas. You can see the magnified view of pancreas in this picture. It develops from the endoderm of the embryo and it lies below the stomach. The structure of pancreas is, it consists of lobules that secretes pancreatic juice. Interspurts at random among the acne are islets of Langerhans which produce hormones. In the picture you can see the pancreatic islet cells secrete hormones. And it has four types of cells which are alpha cells, beta cells, delta cells and F cells. Now hormones. In the picture you can see all the cells, delta cells, beta cells, alpha cells which are present in the islets of Langerhans. So the first one that is the insulin. It is secreted by the beta cells on stimulation by the rise in blood glucose level. Insulin is an anabolic hormone and the deficiency of insulin causes diabetes mellitus. The patient can't use or store glucose. Thus, glucose accumulation in the blood from where it is excreted by kidneys in urine. The diabetic person has blurred vision and is weak, tired, irritable, nausea and the underweight person. Diabetes caused by insufficient insulin production is called insulin dependent diabetes. And the diabetes due to person's inability to use insulin is called insulin independent diabetes. So, diabetes is of two types, insulin dependent and insulin independent. 
Now the second that is glucagon. This is the complete structure of the pancreas, their ducts, acne and the microscopic view. It is secreted by the alpha cells in response to fall in the blood glucose level. It brings about change of the liver glycosin to blood glucose that is glycogenolysis. It is known as hyperglycemic hormones. Excess of glucose in the blood suppresses the secretion of glucagon whereas fall in glucose level starts glucagon production. Now the third that is somatostatin. It is secreted by delta cells. It is an inhibitor of both insulin and glucagon 2. Then pancreatic polypeptide. It is secreted by F cells. It inhibits the release of pancreatic juice. Here insulin and glucagon both show antagonistic functions. Now the ninth that is gonads. It arises from the mesoderm. Testes and ovaries are the gonads and secrete different hormones. So the first one that is the testes. In the picture you can see the structures. Here the testes are located in the scrotum and they secrete male sex hormone androgens such as testosterone by the interstitial cells or leddic cells. In the picture you can see the interstitial cells which are responsible to release the male sex hormone that is testosterone. It stimulates the male reproductive system. It stimulates the formation of sperms in the seminiferous tubules. It stimulates the development of male accessory sex characters and it determines the male sexual behavior and the sexual arc. Now the disorders by these hormones. Failure of testosterone causes inutrodism. And the second is gynecomastia is the excessive development of the mammary glands in the male. In unutrodism a eunuch has underdeveloped and non-functional secondary sex organs, lack accessory sex characters and doesn't produce sperms. While in gynecomastia it develops in males when the estrogen secretions is more than those of androgens. Because of the leddic cells which stimulates by luteinizing hormone to secrete testosterone. So here, rise in the testosterone level in the blood above normal inhibits ICSH secretion by the anterior pituitary lobe. This negative feedback shakes over secretion of testosterone. In the picture you can see high level of testosterone in the blood from the testes which inhibits release of LH from the pituitary which increase LH secretion by pituitary after that reduces testosterone secretion and its label in the blood so it shows the negative feedback of between the two hormones in control testosterone secretion now the second part of gonad that is the ovaries this is the complete structure of ovaries which lies in the abdomen and secrete three female sex hormones estrogen, progesterone and relaxin. So first one that is the estrogen which is secreted by the cells of graphene follicle. In the picture you can see these are the graphene follicle structure and they stimulate female reproductive tract to grow differentiation of ova in the ovary and the development of accessory sex characters. Second is progesterone. It is secreted by the corpus luteum. In the picture you can see the yellow color structure is the corpus luteum. It suspends ovulation during pregnancy, fixes the fetus to the uterine wall, forms placenta and controls the development of fetus in the uterus. Now the third that is relaxing. It is produced by the corpus luteum at the end of gestation period. It releases relaxes the cervix of the uterus and ligaments of the pelvic girdle for easy birth of the young one. Now the disorder of the gonads. 
first one is hypogonadism it refers to inadequate gonadal function in which the first one is male hypogonadism which affected males do not develop secondary sexual characters and musculature and the second is female hypogonadism affected females do not develop secondary sexual characters then precocious puberty it refers to the early maturation of ovaries with production of ova before the age of 9 years in girls or early maturation of testes with production of sperm before the age of 10 years in the boys such boys have enlarged penis muscularization early appearance of pubic and axillary hair faster body growth etc and in the girls have early breast formation early appearance of pubic hair etc now the 10th endocrine gland that is the kidney it originates from the mesoderm of the embryo and these are located in the abdominal cavity attached to the back muscles just below the stomach it secretes a hormone that is renin it act as enzyme that converts a plasma protein angiotensinogen into angiotensin it causes vasoconstriction and raises the blood pressure and also causes the release of hormones from the adrenal medulla now the 11 that is gastrointestinal mucosa it develops from the endoderm stomach secretes gastrin gastrin stimulates the gastric glands to produce the gastric juice and the stomach movements also second is intestinal secretes secretin by the small intestinal mucosa cholecystokinin and bilikinin by the mucosa of the entire small intestine and the enterogastrin enterocrinine and durocrine by the duodenal mucosa and the 12th is placenta it secretes estrogen progesterone and hcg into the mother's blood the hcg in is human uh, human chorionic gonadotropin and it stimulates the corpus luteum in mother's ovary to enlarge and secrete progesterone during pregnancy now insects endocrine glands this is the insect endocrine gland and the endocrine system of cockroach comprises the first one that is the intercerebral gland cells it lies in the brain between the two cerebral ganglia they secrete hormones called brain hormones second is carpora cardiaca these are a pair of rod like bodies situated on the sides of the esophagus just behind the brain they secrete a growth hormone third is carpora elata these are in pair present behind the carpora cardiaca they secrete juvenile hormone in the nymphal stage and the fourth is prothoracic gland these are situated in the prothorax they secrete a hormone called agdison which controls malting of the nymphs now the role of hormones in homeostasis hormones helps to maintain homeostasis by their integrated action and feedback control here there are two types of control first one is negative and second is positive control of feedback so in case of negative feedback control it has two examples first one is blood thyroxin homeostasis and the negative feedback control is the synthesis of a biochemical slows or halts when its level in the blood rises above normal so in this the first is the blood thyroxine in which if thyroxine is in excess it exerts a negative feedback effect on the hypothalamus and the anterior pituitary lobe which then secretes less, less release of hormones and the thyroid stimulating hormones respectively in this picture you can see the hypothalamus in response to some external stimuli produces tsh releasing hormone which activates the anterior pituitary lobe which stimulates with the help of thyroid stimulating hormones to thyroid 
glands to release thyroxine so this thyroxine is responsible for to the target tissues for the regulation of metabolism if thyroxine is in excess it shows the negative feedback effects on the hypothalamus by the anterior lobe of which then secretes less releaser hormones and the thyroid stimulating hormones respectively so it shows the inhibitory effect if it ex excretes in the large quantity now the blood glucose homeostasis it's also a negative feedback and the secretion of hormones may be under the negative feedback control of a metabolite in, and here the insulin maintains blood glucose homeostasis here in the picture you can see increase in blood glucose level by the carbohydrate rich diet stimulates pancreas beta cells to release insulin which stimulates the cells to take up glucose for the functioning which is utilized in the cell respiration or in the stores in the, at the form of glycogen if it lowers the blood glucose level to the normal with fall in blood glucose level insulin secretion decreases this checks the further falls in the blood glucose level so it shows the inhibits insulin synthesis function in this manner insulin maintains blood glucose homeostasis now the positive feedback control in this an accumulating biochemical increases its own production for example uterine contraction at the onset of labor stimulates the release of hormone oxytocin which intensifies uterine contractions the contractions further stimulate the production of oxytocin the cycle of increase stops suddenly after birth of the baby now this is the end of endocrine system in which you understand about the part of endocrine system their function structures disorder and the control mechanism of hormone the next video will be on the disease and disorders in the human body system so if you like this video stay tuned with my channel anupma biology classes if you understand like and share it and subscribe to my channel anupma biology classes if you have any questions any queries or any suggestions write is in the comment section below so thank you so much for the watching